right lockdown day, two million. Um, a few people have asked to see the boat set up, um, so here it is, set up in the garden. Hang on, bits. Oh, mate. Oh, hang on, the dog's calling. Right, so my boat, my sib, it's aluminium floor, and there's the aluminium floor laid out in the grass because it's a pain to put it in when it's when it's all done up. Um, so this is sort of obviously starting from the back of the boat to the front of the boat. This here, this is where the petrol tank goes, so it sits on like a, a skid-proof mat if you like, and then I can clip it, clip it in place so it don't slide back. So obviously this is aluminium floor. Um, it's quite heavy the aluminium floor. Um, but it keeps it nice and stable to be fair it does keep this boat a lot more stable whereas previous boats we've had have been um inflatable floors now they're a lot easier to set up bets what Salo, come on in them leave her come on in there you go girl um right now i've got a dog um yeah so all it does is it clips in there and it goes it sits underneath that bit of wood that runs across the back of the trance in there on the bottom as you can see um, and it clips in all the way down around the sides. Um, what I said, I didn't put it in because it's a pain. There's my pump, just a normal foot pump. Um, oh, I've got an electric pump, a, a 12 volt pump that goes in the car, what blows most of it up, but they're never strong enough. Or it's only a cheap one from Aldi's, it's just never strong enough to, to finish it off. You have to have this to give it the last bit. Um, so there's three tubes on mine, right? Bet you're going to get down there, babe. So, as you can see over there, tube one. So you start off with that, tube one, and then this is tube two, and then tube three. And what happens is, if you do them in unison, the two side ones, so this one and this one, are not quite solid. You can never get them quite solid, but then when you blow this one up, it pushes and fixes in and, and just makes everything completely solid. Um, I don't know how it works, but yeah, that's what it does. Um, Obviously, oars is safety aspect. They're always on the boat. And they again, they come off. So when you can, when you roll it down and fold it up, um, I've now got my wheels fitted. Um, I basically made them, um, and Nate welded them all up for me. Um, Nate's got his own YouTube channel. If you haven't seen it, lovely bit of stainless welding there. I've, all I've done is I bought the wheels off of um, off of Amazon. They're solid. Um, I think they're for wheelbarrows, to be fair. And they was I think 13 quid for the pair. So it's a bit of a touch. Um, and then literally it's just a bit of aluminium tube, uh, C um, channel, and then stainless tube, bolt through the middle, there's a pin, and all I do now, so I can wheel this now, as it is, with the engine on the back, so we'll get to that in a minute, I can lift this up from the front and wheel it round, and drag it with me, like a trailer, um, when I get into the water, once it's in the water, take the, the, uh, the little split pin out, pull out the pin, the wheel flips, folds over, and goes in the top one, put the pin back, and then I can go fishing, um, or for a scud. Um, what else can I tell you about the boat before we get to the engine? Yeah, there's plenty of little clips and bits and bobs to tie up to. Um, this is my li this, this little bit of rope I've got on here. This little bit of blue rope always stays on the front of the boat because when I um, when I launch it, I've got a decent amount I can still hold on to. Um, let's chuck that there. Um, right, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to the safety stuff in a minute. This is my engine. It's a 15 horsepower Mariner. Sorry about the state of the garden, guys. As you know, I demolished the pond the other day. I'll quickly show you that. Um, it's it's not been it's not been put back together properly. It's been put back together. We've got what I've got, but now we can steal the fish. Swimming around, water's all nicely cleared out. The big beast is down there. My big ghost. You can just about see him. Um, and the chag, the tench always sits in that deep hole as well. But yeah, the fish the fish are much more enjoying their ass, so it's a bit it's a bit it's just a bit longer now. But like I say it's been thrown together for now because I can't get hold of any materials. What right, that's the pond. So here's my engine. 15 horsepower two stroke. <coughs> She's nice and clean inside. Yes, the hood, the hood comes off nicely. Um basically since I've had it, it's had a service, it's had new spark plugs. Nice new spark plugs. This engine's a 1999, so well, yeah, it's 20 years or 21 years old, but it runs lovely. I'm not running it today because everyone's got their out, the doors open and their gardens. And also, no one wants to be a two-stroke engine having the nuts revved out of it. Um, obviously, that's the tiller that goes all the way back out the way. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else there is to say. Um, choke to, to get us started. Um, and this bit is where you connect your fuel up to for if you don't know and it's pull start um i can't really show much else um so yeah that's the engine short shaft 
because um, I had a long shaft before and it was no good on this boat. I had a 9.9 .9 and it did not work. And I didn't know why until I spoke to an expert and he told me that the, the cavitation plate on the bottom, which I think is this, this is the cavitation plate, needs to be in line with this, with the bottom of your boat. Um, and oh, where I had the long shaft one, the cavitation plate was down here. So all it was doing is it was kicking water up all the way up the inside of the engine and throwing it in the boat. So it was filling my boat up when I was out. Um, so yeah, there's a prop. Um, it's got forward and reverse. So that's forwards and that's reverse. That's that. Um, just another thing. This is a um, this has got an inflatable inflatable keel. So once the floor goes in, you notice that that hole there on the top. That is for this to blow up. So what happens then is once all the floors in, I then blow this bit up, and it gives me a V shape in the bottom of the boat, so I can get up on the plane um, a bit quicker. So yeah, that's that. Um, what else is there? Um, now a lot of people do say, let me get a chair. So let's have a little, let's have a little chat. This isn't my life jacket. This is just one that I've got here that people borrow when they come out with me. My proper life jacket's in nice work van because um, we use it when we're doing work on boats. Um, that is a must. If you go out without one of them, you're just a twat um, in the nicest possible way. An absolute hit. Why well, risk your life for the sake of 100 quid for what they are? I mean, that's not that's a cheap one. But if, some, if I was with someone and they fell in and they was wearing that, it would help them out a bit. And the next thing is one of them VHF radio this is probably one of the cheaper ones in the range a Cobra Marine one um, I don't know why it's on channel 12 probably because I was talking to someone 16 is Coast Guard um, which is there so even if you're on for instance channel 10 push channel 16 it goes straight to 16 and then I think my channel for around here for fishing at the end of the Medway in the Thames Estuary pill ports I think it's 71 um, so I would be flicking between channel 71 and 16 and I'll keep it on um, most of the day just to hear what's going on while I'm out and about. I'm never off far but it's always it's always good to, to just to know what's happening. Um, so again that is a must. That I think they're new about 80 quid. So for your life jacket and your, and your VHF which is a definite must and you should get a license for them or, I'm going to admit on YouTube I haven't got one. Um, it's not it's not law you have to have one it's just a done thing you should but um i know how to use them i'm quite confident knowing how to use them knowing what i've got to say when i've got to say it so yeah them two things are a must if you go out without them you're silly also telling people where you're going and what time you're leaving and what time you're expected back just silly things like that you should just do anyway um but any of you's wondering obviously a lot of people would think inflatable boat hooks fishing knives it ain't a good idea you'll end up sinking popping it this is a lot stronger than you think. I've, this is probably my fourth now, fourth or fifth boat, um, and I've never touched wood, never ever had a problem with punches or anything. Hooks do touch it, obviously it's inevitable, um, but when they do, they just sort of hit the side of the boat and twist and, and not bounce off of it. I'm not going to say that they're not going to stick into it, because they would, but a pinprick, you've still got two other tubes. Unless the only way you're gonna, you're, the only way you're gonna sink this is if all three tubes. Even if this one went and this one went, yeah, you'd have to cut the engine and get rid of the engine. But at least you'd have a, a, a big tube at the front to just hold onto until someone came to help you. Um, yeah. So like I say, they're they're pretty safe. They are pretty safe. I, I'm I'm quite happy to go out on it any time. Let me just put my phone there so I can lift this up. Sorry guys, give us a second. No. no. That's it, that's what I wanted. Just to lift her up. There's the bung, so when you get back to shore, you can um, take the bung out. It has got a it has got a one-way valve on it, so basically you could probably pull it out while you're out there and it'd just let water out it wouldn't let water in but i'm not sure i want to this is the line obviously the water's up to here so this is in the water oh, i don't think i'd want to lean over and pull that out while i'm out in the drink um i don't think i'd want to do that at all but yeah so oh i'll show you what i'll show you what it works on like the wheels with the wheels 
best I can. So with its wheels, all I do is I'll get, get this out of the car because all this completely rolls up and goes in the boot. There you go. And I can take it for a walk now. It's quite easy to pull. Yeah. It, it's, it's easier to be fair with the engine on it. Reason being, the weight of the engine counterbalances it. So, yeah. That is my sib. It's 3.3 metres. Um, I wouldn't really go out on anything less than 3 metres. I mean, this is only 300 mil more, but yeah, I think anything less than 3 metres is probably pushing it a bit. This will easily take two people fishing. Eas I know it does because I've had it. Um, yeah. The plan is, with, with these wheels, once this engine's lowered, this is my next little project I want to do. Let me just lower this engine down. Let me just lower this. Hold on. Sorry, guys. I'll get back to you. If you can imagine them wheels now up, so flipped up the other way, so they're one sticking up there and one sticking up there. I'm going to um, I'm gonna put a bar across them and make a, a, a rod rest out of that then. Um, so I can just lean the rods off out the back when I'm fishing on my own. But other than that, guys, I don't really know what else um, what else to say. Other than, look them up. Um, we call them sibs, small inflatable boats. And they're known as ribs. or They're not ribs, because a rib is a rigid inflatable boat, and that means it's got hard floor. Um, so this is a sib, because it's soft. Um, or they call them dinghies or tenders. Look them up. Um, it's... It, it, they're, they're unbelievable fun, unbelievable fun, and the best thing is you can take it anywhere. Literally, that will roll up and go in the boot of any car. Or well, I'll take loads and loads of other stuff with me. Don't forget, you've got a fuel tank as well um, to go in there. So I've got a 12 litre one, which is 12 litres is more than enough fuel for the amount of miles I do in a day, which is not a lot. I pick my I pick my journey before I go. I've got Navionics up on my phone. I pick pick where I'm going the night before. Find a little mark on there, and I'll just go out to that and sit there for the day. Um, if things go a little bit slow, then I'll have a little move. But genuinely, you don't you don't need to. I only go out on it really nice days. Like today would have been a lovely day to go out on it, but it's Good Friday. It's also my birthday, and I'm stuck indoors. I should have been on a boat in Pool Harbour today with my missus. I had it all booked, spend the night on a boat. But no, here I am in the bloody garden talking about my little boat. Um, yeah, other than that, that's about it. Um, thanks for watching guys um, sorry for the lack of fishing but there's not a lot I can do about it at the minute I'll um, see you on the next one cheers all